I'm really pleased to be joined by Ida Gurop today, who is Head of Creative at Organic Cup. So welcome, Ida. Thank you. I'm happy you wanted to have me part of your wonderful online event. it'd be fab if you could just tell us a little bit um, about yourself, about your kind of career journey so far and what's led you to Organic Cup. Right, uh, well, so I, well, I kind of um, ended up with Organic Cup a little bit randomly. I had just moved back from um, Paris actually where I had been working for a big international modeling agency. So you could say that I made a bit of a, a switch in my career, Elaine. Um, and I got uh, the opportunity to interview for um, this job back in 2016 um, via network. Basically, I got approached on LinkedIn. Uh, someone had recommended me for this um, position. Um, and then I went into it and I just had really good chemistry with the two, two of the co-owners uh, and co-founders. Um, and just loved the product, the mission, and really wanted to get involved. Then, do you want to tell us a little bit about Organic Up and what the mission is of your brand and what it is? Yeah, so maybe just to give you some background, um, Organic Up was founded back in 2012. Um, and today it's one of the leading uh, menstrual cup brands, uh, at least in Europe. And um, what some of our main markets are the UK, Holland and Denmark. Um, and Organic Hub is a sustainability focused uh, menstrual cup company and we're based here in Copenhagen, Denmark. And the team is currently up about 20 people and we're all dedicated to driving a meaningful uh, impact in the world. And we primarily do that uh, through our product, um, the menstrual cup, the Organic Hub. Um, and for us, it has always been a about more than just the cup itself. It's also the impact it can have on different scales. We're working on driving a positive impact on three different scales, um, environmental, social, and cultural. And we do these through different uh, collaborations with NGO partners, uh, health professionals. We obviously donate cups to those in need, um, but also to um, educators uh, to increase awareness of the more sustainable um, alternative alternatives out there, uh, but also just to support the efforts of talking about periods, uh, which menstrual uh, products out there, how you use them, um, and helping sort of uh, normalizing the uh, conversations around um, periods. Yeah, oh no, it's fantastic. And I think it's really great to hear what you say, like it's more than just the cup. And I think it's amazing to see more businesses really having that purpose at the heart of, of what they do as well. Um, so in terms of empowerment then, because obviously that's the theme of our event and it seems like that's a lot around what you do as well, like what you said about, you know, um, opening up these conversations. What do you think empowerment means to you and your business? How do you embody that within what you're doing? I think that we um, sort of embody empowerment by providing platforms for uh, exchanging knowledge, information, being able to ask questions um, freely. I think uh, still today, many uh, are feel uncertain where to ask these questions so it's really empowering to see how our community support each other they help each other they want to exchange uh, experiences and and information uh, we just provide them a platform and then they just carry uh, the whole thing um, that is very empowering to me and, and i'm very proud to be able to uh, foster that um, and and yeah yeah, fab. And just to tell us the benefits a little bit about about using a menstrual cup then and why is it that that is a great way, especially, um, like you said, working with different types of communities? 
Right. Um, so period products, uh, it's not everyone that I wear, but it's, it can be a substantial financial burden on people as well. Um, so the benefits of using a menstrual cup is uh, on many different levels. It's both uh, financially a better solution long term because you don't have to go out and buy products every month, uh, which can be a, a big financial burden to some. Um, besides that, it also saves a lot of waste because you don't uh, have these disposable period products that you end up just throwing out uh, every month and lots of uh, people still uh, flush their used tampons. Uh, this waste can end up in our landfills, but also in our sewages, in our oceans. Um, it's actually a pretty significant um, environmental issue. Um, besides that, um, you can use the cup for up to 12 hours at a time, so you don't have to worry about having to change it in school or at work. Uh, many people feel comfortable, uh, uncomfortable having to go out and change it. They still hide it, hide a tampon up in their sleeve because they, they, don't, they don't want to talk about their period or they feel like it's a shameful thing. Um, so we feel obligated and privileged that we can provide a solution to so many people by donating these cups uh, through our NGO partners. And that's not just um, NGO partners in developing countries. I think we have this misconception that it's only in like women and girls in developing countries that struggle with uh, period poverty. Um, it's equally an issue in Denmark, in UK, in the US. Um, and we try to really also uh, focus on that, put focus on that. Um, and maybe it's more in the Western communities, the issue is more the uh, stigma around periods. It's still in something that's considered shameful and you don't talk about it. Um, and that's something we really try to sort of um, reverse. And um, we do that with different impact projects. Uh, we have this project called uh, Taboo Global Periods, which is something that's completely separate from uh, Organic Hub. It's, it's our project, but it's not a commercial project. Uh, we basically just wanted to create um, an online uh, platform that t can tell stories um, of how periods affect the lives of teenagers across the globe and, and, and communities. Yeah, I think that's so interesting what you say about like it might be different in like different cultures or, you know, slightly different things of how it affects, but ultimately the kind of core issues is the same. And I think really, like you said, what it comes down to is that shame about being able to to speak about it. So to go back a little bit then to you. So obviously you said that you um, were in a modeling agency and moved to this area. So what was that kind of, what was the significant turning point of how you kind of, yeah, moved pathways? Um, I would say that I knew when I left my, I loved my, my old job because the environment was fun and interesting and my my uh, colleagues were great and colorful and it very it was a very um, diverse uh, place of work i was uh, i'm obviously from denmark and i was put in like i, I ended up in paris uh, working for an american company so i i got introduced to a, a multi multicultural workspace which was super uh, giving um, and I knew that I wanted that in my new uh, workplace as well and I got that again um, to like we speak English here the majority of the employees are from elsewhere than uh, Denmark and we really try to employ people that are not necessarily like we are, so it doesn't become too uh, homogenous of a group of people. Um, and, I, and I really like that. And besides that, I just think that chemistry was what it came down to when I walked into my interview with uh, my current uh, bosses. Uh, it just um, made sense. And then the mission, obviously, that I could contribute to some sort of positive change in the world is something that I will never take for granted and 
something that I rave about to my friends. And I think that I don't know if they, if they are annoyed by me or they are jealous uh, because I'm very passionate about my, uh, my work. Um, it's just really nice to know that what you do actually makes a difference. Yeah. And no, that's great. And how do you think, you know, what top tips do you think you would give for kind of young women that are just starting out their careers and kind of navigating the world of work and finding out what they want to do and how they work in teams? Yeah, I think that um, I'm still learning as well. It's a, <laughs> it's really difficult. And then um, I still rely on my my mom. She's, um, she's very um, inspiring as well to me. And she's always said, uh, don't be afraid to ask if it's for a pay rise, for help, for advice, um, stand your ground. And also she told me uh, not too long ago that often, and I think she's right, women, they just don't feel comfortable pushing and like asking for, let's say a pay rise. And sometimes you should just treat it like men do once in a while and just go for it, ask for it. No one will, think less of you just for asking for something you want. And there could also be a job title or more responsibility. Whatever it might be, I don't, I think I at least have tended the tendency to sort of tiptoe around it and think that, oh no, but if I ask for this, then maybe they will like me less. And, and that's just completely untrue. And if it's the case, then I don't think it's the right place you're in. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. And how do you, so, you know, saying that you experienced that, how did you kind of overcome that? Was it literally just by doing it? Or like, you know, how did you get over that barrier of like tiptoeing and like asking for what you want? I, it's mostly in my head, so I just have to do it. And especially here, whenever I've asked for something, um, if it's been more responsibility, well, if it's more responsibility, uh, becoming a manager, they've always supported me in my growth as an employee and as a manager. Um, so I almost feel a little bit, um, I wish I had just asked for it before then, instead of having to, like having spent so much time and energy uh, mulling it over and can I really ask for this? And is it is it okay to ask for, um, and yes, it is always okay to ask, I think. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, well, no, that all sounds really great and it's been absolutely really so interesting hearing about your journey and about what Organic Up is doing and um, just to finish off I think we kind of touched on this before but just to round off our uh, conversation and just to kind of ask you it one more time um, just to summarise what does empowerment mean to you? Um, I think uh, empowerment uh, means um, knowledge uh, exchanging knowledge and information um, and that we are able to provide platforms for that knowledge exchange is amazing um, and it's super empowering to see how a community that is in no way uh, sort of a personally connected go out of their way to support each other.